How you all doing guys? Brandon here. Welcome back to Retro Dodo. Now we've been doing these top 10 lists for some time now. We tend to do them every month or so. And in the previous video, a lot of you asked for us to do the top 10 GameCube games list. So that's exactly what we've done. After you watch this video, let me know in the comments what you want us to do next and we'll do exactly that. And before we jump in, we've got some new Retro Dodo hoodies here, embroidered the lot. You can snag them in the description box below. And yeah, without further ado, let's take a look at the top 10 best GameCube games of all time. A mysterious prince that uses a blade to rewind time when he makes mistakes or falls to his death? Now that sounds like one gnarly game. Based in Persia, our unnamed prince sets out to right the mistakes that his father has made after ransacking a city on the behest of a treacherously wicked visor. After releasing the sands of time by accident, the city's inhabitants turn to evil monsters that the prince must defeat in order to collect the sands and restore balance to the world. It's a gripping platform game and one that has a ton of playability. The graphics on this game were also pretty special, using Ubisoft's Jade Engine to create some stunning Persian scenery from courtyards through to temple gardens. Any game where you can turn back time is a winner for me, especially when it involves a kick-ass dagger and zombie-style foot soldiers. 9. Mario Party 4 The next title in our list of the best GameCube games is, in my opinion, the best party game on the console. The shop system was easy, the magic lantern and the accompanying genie always felt like cheating even though it was part of the game, and handing over 20 coins for a star is still one of the best bargains in life. For anyone who isn't a kin with Mario Party 4, it's a board game turn-based title in which players move around different courses and collect coins that they can then trade for items and, more importantly, stars. Players compete in mini-games at the end of each round, either in teams or against each other, and each course has different elements that are set to spice things up for the players. There's also a story mode where you can play against the computer and unlock a sixth course, Bowser's Castle, which is filled with evil stuff and a lot of fire. Everyone loves Mario, and everyone loves a party. It's a guaranteed recipe for success. 8. Super Mario Sunshine After the success of Super Mario 64, his first solo venture on the new console had to be a great hit. While on a holiday in Isle Delfino, Mario encounters an imposter, Shadow Mario, who has been running amok and destroying the island. Mario is joined by a water jetpack type item called Flood, who helps him to clean up the island in a bid to find the 120 shine sprites needed to bring the light back to the island. The gameplay in this game is very similar to Super Mario 64, which is never going to be a bad thing, but the graphics have improved tenfold. It's a fun game with all of the same collectible gathering action that we've come to know and love from our favourite Italian plumber, and it's nice to see a new location for a Mario game instead of being based around the Mushroom Kingdom's usual haunts, and the introduction of the Piantas and Nokis, Isle Delfino's residence, is a nice little feature. But at least we can have a ride around on Yoshi when he gets bored, and cool off with Flood when things get a little too heated. 7. Luigi's Mansion This game is, without doubt, one of the best GameCube games on the console. Seeing Luigi creeping around the mansion and sneaking up on unsuspecting ghosts brings a whole new thrill factor to our lesser spotted green plumbing friend. What Luigi lacks in courage, he makes up for in comedy value and job satisfaction. I've never seen anyone this determined to do such a dangerous and terrifying job. You can collect new upgrades for your Poltergust 3000, find new coins and hearts along the way through your mansion, and suck up pictures, dust, leaves, tablecloths, and more to find secrets that will help you along your quest. If you're looking to get Luigi's Mansion 3 for the Switch, then start from the beginning and check out the title that started it all off. 6. Star Fox Adventures Fox McCloud was badass enough up in the sky while flying his R-Wing, but put him down on the ground with a load of dinosaurs and give him a staff to fight his way around with, and you've got yourself another GameCube game that you just need to buy. 
It's eight years after Andros's defeat, but there's no rest for Fox and the gang. This time, our furry-tailed friend is heading after General Scales and the Sharp Claw army in an attempt to save the Earthwalker tribe and bring peace back to Dinosaur Planet. He also teams up with a lady fox named Crystal who lost her home when General Scales attacked. Looks like life on the ground isn't too bad after all, eh, Fox? Rare have done it again with this rich adventure classic. The colours and scenery in the game are something to behold, and the worlds themselves are all full of surprise at every turn. The Star Fox Adventures gameplay is very similar to the Zelda game series. You can use your staff to fight in melee style combat, unlock hidden items, and solve puzzles that allow you to move on to the next area in a world. You can also fly in your R-Wing to different areas of the planet once you get far enough through the story, and try your hand at dodging objects in space as you make your way from one part of the world to another. It's a great adventure game from the genius minds over at Rare, and one that you should definitely give a try. 5. Pikmin This game both infuriated me and filled me with pride in equal measure, and any game that can bring up such a strange mixture of feelings deserves a place in our best GameCube games list. In homage to Lemmings, Pikmin sees players pulling little flower creatures that follow you around aimlessly. They help to solve puzzles and problems in order to retrieve pieces of your broken ship. Captain Olimer, an intrepid space adventurer with an oddly shaped head and a fatal oxygen allergy, has 30 days to fix his ship before he dies on the planet in which he has crash landed. The planet-based animals that live on the planet, otherwise known as Pikmin, are here to help him to find his parts and return to his home planet. Sounds simple, right? Well, think again. The game lasts for 30 days, each day lasting around 13 minutes in real time. You can't do anything at night because predators will eat your Pikmin, and if you don't fix your spaceship in time then it's game over for you and your little plant friends. Trying to keep them alive is like looking after a thousand children all at once, and even more stressful because they're always being eaten by monsters. Still, it's a great puzzle game that you should definitely try. 4. Mario Kart Double Dash Mario Kart Double Dash is a pretty unique game in itself, as it is the first to see players picking two characters per race instead of just one. One character races the player's chosen car, and the other stands on the back and throws items at opponents. It's a slightly odd feature, seeing as though we've done so well with just one character for so many years, but it's a Mario Kart's title, so we'll let it slide. Players can switch at any time, and you can team up with a friend on the same cart instead of going head to head. Mario Kart Double Dash saw the introduction of even more new characters to the Mario Kart scene, along with new power-ups and courses. With the success of Mario Kart 64, Double Dash had to pull out all of the stops to improve on its predecessor. It went on to become the second best-selling game on the GameCube, so it did pretty well. 3. Star Wars Bounty Hunter Jango Fett was always one of my favourite Star Wars characters, especially seen as though his dad was the only person smart enough to capture Han Solo. This game sees you play as Jango himself, following a mission from Darth Tyrannus in a bid to rid the galaxy of the Bando Gora. They're basically a criminal gang who worship the Force, but they're causing a lot of bother for old Tyrannus and Darth Sidious, and they want them out of the picture. Django goes on a mission to take down their leader and receives more money than he knows what to do with in return. But as with all evil crime rings and the promise of money on completion of a dangerous task, it's not as straightforward as it sounds. Django uses a blaster pistol in each hand so it's easy to shoot down multiple enemies as you make your way through the different levels. There are also plenty of different power-ups to pick up along the way to improve your bounty hunting skills, as well as items that will help Django to defeat the Bando Gora once and for all. I waited so long for this game to arrive as it got imported from a different country. At least that's what my mother told me when it didn't arrive on my birthday, but maybe she just forgot. Either way, it has some special memories related to it and I loved it once it finally arrived, so I'm sticking it on the list. 2. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess I hold Twilight Princess on par with Ocarina of Time, which is a high praise indeed, and in some respects the GameCube controller provides a better gameplay experience than the Wiimote. Twilight Princess was the best-selling Zelda game of all time until Breath of the Wild came out, beating Ocarina of Time by 900,000 copies. 
It's based many years after the events of Ocarina of Time and sits in between Majora's Mask and Four Swords. I wasn't a fan of Clock Town in Majora's Mask so much, so seeing a traditional take on Hyrule after Wind Waker felt incredibly refreshing and familiar at the same time. Hyrule itself looks amazing, and the return of Hyrule Castle Square was a nice touch. You can play as Wolf Link or Link himself, building amazing weapons and immersing yourself in a superb adventure alongside Midna, Zant, and other iconic characters. Honestly, I don't want to talk about this too much, I just want you to pick it up and play it because I cannot recommend it enough. And finally, number one on our list is The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. I was skeptical when I first saw the cell shaded Link and the cartoony graphics in The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, but boy was I wrong to be worried. Every copy of this game sold out in minutes in my local town, but I remember going with my mum to look for a copy and found one in a second-hand game shop a couple of days after. I don't even think it had been opened, and it came with the Master Quest Ocarina of Time Disc 2, which was a great bonus. For those of you that haven't played it, go take a long hard look in the mirror. The adventure starts on Outset Island, where our green garbed hero is still in his pajamas. Ganondorf is searching for any girls who look like Princess Zelda so that he can take her part of the Triforce for himself. He basically sends a huge pigeon over the sea to hunt for girls with pointy ears and it ends up capturing Link's sister. To cut a long story short, Link befriends some pirates, gets washed up near a talking bow and has to collect different items using the power of the wind to save his sister and defeat Ganondorf. I've played this game so many times that I've lost count but I always spot something new that I missed the previous time. It might not be Ocarina or Breath of the Wild, but the story is incredible and the graphics allow for some amazing boss battles that will stick with you forever. Stop whatever you're doing and make sure to grab a copy because this is the best GameCube game of all time. As per usual, thank you for checking out this video. If you want to see even more top 10 videos, check out our YouTube channel. And if you want to support us even further, we do have a Patreon in the links below for exclusive access to upcoming videos and monthly giveaways. Catch you in the next one.